I don't know how you all do it. How many like full length comedies have you done or specials or? N- none. None. Zero. No. Zero. Because I don't know how you do. I understand how you do three minutes. I know how you do six. I know how you do 11, even 11, which is hard as hell. But you do an hour and 20 minutes where you're just like tying it all together and taking them on a journey. And it's like, it's kind of like more one man show than comedy special. Like it's, it's absolutely exhilarating. And there's, there's really like a dozen, two dozen people that can really effectively do that in the world. So it's, it's a a skill set. It's a skill set that is a very, very narrow. Yeah, I think there's maybe like 10 or 15, yeah. uh, n- me not being one of them. I'm very comfortable in the 20 to 30 minutes, but I have so many different 20 minute sets um, and I like it that way. Yeah. And putting them together is a different craft that I can't, I can't take credit for uh, having figured out yet. Yeah. I just love, I love 20 minutes. I love being able to go in with one specific point of view, Yeah. Uh, whether it's a heightened character or, or just, vulnerability and just playing in that. Um, But couldn't you do, just playing devil's advocate and this is not my world at all, but couldn't you do, you're really 20 minutes you're super excited about and then thematically some filler and then a 20 minute that you were also excited about and then like tie them thematically in a way so it felt like all of a piece. Because no one does just one theme all the way through unless you're like, trans bashing for 45 minutes or something like that but you know what i mean that's a big single theme topic yeah 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 you could do that and people do that and some some people do it all right and even fewer do it really well yeah but why like why make a thing an hour when it doesn't need to be there's just if you wanted a full special for like you want to sell tickets to a giant theater and have a thousand people you know do a that's where i'm fighting with this right now Because like to do a live show and you need to have an hour or multiple people Um, and I'm doing it and I like it. I think it's, I think it's fine. Um, I think that I'd be proud of this if, if I were to put out 20 minutes of it and not because 20 minutes is good and the 40 is bad. I have three different 20 minutes that I, that I am able to Frankenstein together and it's a show. Yeah. Um, But that's, I'm making it an hour because I'm supposed to. And I don't want to do it because I'm supposed to. I want to do it because this is the piece I'm proud of and this is the this is the experience I want to share. And also, and this is to this is because uh, my of my inability, not because of the way I look at comedy. I'm in the, like whatever mood I'm in today, I want to be that. I want to talk to you about that. I don't want to have to talk about something that I have to fill space with. And that's what stand up is. So I don't. Th- I love the one man show idea. I don't know. Stand up is so fucking hard. I also think I'm very good at it. I love what I'm doing. I really, really that's do. Awesome. Um, but the difference between three 20 minute sets and an hour set are different sports yeah, to me. It is. It is. Yeah. No. It's exactly what you say. And that's. I'm just in awe of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, of that ability, and 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 really appreciate it. I have only done a little bit of stand up, like for like charity benefits right. or emceeing and you tell a few jokes in between where everyone you don't have that pressure on you because you're like oh they're just the emceers oh it's just for charity so you don't have to be that funny the only time i tried a, a routine was uh i wrote a bunch of like really warped messed up one-liners and put them on cue cards in a shoe box And I went out on stage and I said, I was uh, hospitalized for manic depression. And uh, while hospitalized, I wrote a whole bunch of jokes. And none of that is true. And I want to share the jokes I wrote. This was from seven years ago. I just found this shoebox in my head. I haven't even looked at these. And they're all just nothings. No, they, and they're 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 really fucked yeah. up, weird little one liner jokes, like Dimitri Martin little one liners. And so I'm reading them, and they're pretty dark. And but people really believed that it was 100 percent true, and they were I was getting these gasps, oh, right. and these awes, and like, you know, I'd say like, women, you can't live with them, you can't live within them. I actually think that's really deep. 
It's kind of true. But you and can though. You'd have to, how? Love, making love. But live, how would that work? What is life if it isn't for love? We'll be right back. Thanks. Thanks for watching. So you're, but you know, but, but the audience was like, oh, and they were really disturbed and people were like, those jokes were really upsetting. Like, did you try and kill yourself? Like it was. Could, could, we, could we talk about this for a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can talk about anything. Except yes. that foul, obscure bath mat of a shirt that you're wearing. Okay. I am a Keep guest going. of yours, you know? Keep going. So two separate things I want to talk about. One, the first is that bit that you did that people thought was real. That is a operational cost of committing to a bit. It happens sometimes. Uh, obviously, it would be better if they knew what you were doing. Um, I'm sure some people did. The thing is, that bit is just as funny. They just didn't know your intention yet. So the craft is letting them in on it without telling them. That's just the first thing that I think is so, yes, so fun. And I did not do that effectively, but that that's is, great. That yeah. is, uh, I've been doing this since 2007. Most, if not all of my friends and peers have at least a special that are still doing it now, if not a lot more. I have not, and they have de developed an ability to do stand-up in a much more efficient way than me. The one thing that I have figured out is how to let them in on it. And I'm still not great at it. I just could do it sometimes now. Mm -hmm. That being said, once you're able to let them in on it, then you have this bit. That bit does not work for an hour and it shouldn't by design. No. That bit works for three to eight minutes, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of arcs you have and how, how many jokes there are. But if you wanna do an hour, that means you have to do that bit and then an another bit with a transition but also when you're doing stuff that is like, I don't want to tell them what I'm doing, by design, that bit might inform the next one. So it doesn't let you manufacture and play with expectations as much with the second, third, or fourth bit. So, oh, figure out how to do that. Why? And that's why I think it's so fun. Why not have a whole bunch of eight minute sets? Why not have a whole bunch of 20 minute sets? Because you need to have an hour. And I don't like that. Um, I just watched the uh, uh, Carl Reiner's documentary on Albert Brooks. Did you watch it? No. Uh, it's on HBO and it's fantastic. Oh, wow. And I love Albert Brooks. Yes, me too. And I don't know Albert Brooks as a stand-up. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always felt connected to him in a way. I, he, he, you know what I mean? By, like he's, he works yeah, for me. That sure. works for me. Did, you, did they show the bit um, which I saw when I was like 11 years old on The Tonight Show? Uh, I don't know if they showed it in the thing. It's a pretty famous bit. He got on and he's like, listen, there's only three channels. Back then there was only three channels. Yeah. At, at any given moment, someone is changing the channel and they have no idea what came before. There's, there's so several hundred resetting. thousand people um, ch turning in. So I'm gonna say something really not funny and you're all gonna laugh and this is all for the benefit of the people who just happen right. to be turning the channel. So are you ready? Yeah. And then he would just kind of give a bad punchline and get raucous applause. Yeah. And it was so meta, it blew my mind at age 11. I was like, holy shit, you can do that? So um, I don't know if I saw him do that or if I had that bit on my own. And I say that because watching the stuff that he did on stage from the doc was like, not in a bad way, but like, oh, he, I mean, obviously he did it first. There are so many things that he did mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily the same bit, but definitely the same intention. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, one, no wonder why I always connected to him, even though it wasn't stand up. But also like, yeah, there's, there's only nine jokes in the world anyway. There's only so many ways you mm -hmm. could do it. But like seeing him do that, it was, um, he did it in a way that the specials back then were late night sets or, uh, or variety sets. Mm -hmm. So by design, it wasn't supposed to be an hour. It was supposed to be three to five minutes. Yeah. So we could just bang out all these three to five minutes. And I love that. I love that. But I don't think it's a coincidence that he never ended up being known as a stand-up comic. Yeah. Maybe because he got into the movie so so quickly. Yeah. And didn't want to do it and anymore. And he was such a good actor. He's so good. Yeah. But that's what makes those bits so good. You you being able to convince these people who know who you are, that's why you're there, that you were in a mental hospital and now you're talking about living with inside a woman. And like for them to believe it's real, 
is a testament to your commitment to the thing. <laughs> it's just, without judgment, just from what you told me, missing one little thing, yeah. and that's letting them that, understand. That same comedy show, I did another bit where I have, I, this was in Seattle, and um, my good buddy Mike and his wife, Julie. Um, Shout out to Mike and Julie, by the way. Uh, Mike and Julie, if you're watching, and um, I did a bit, I, I was so proud of this. I brought them up on stage. I'm like, everyone, this is Mike and Julie. I went to high school with, with Mike. And then right after high school, Mike married Julie. They've been together since they were 19 or 20. And just so happy. Give them a round of applause. And like, and and Julie, um, you know, I, I I dated Julie actually before Mike, which wasn't true. And like, oh, I like how you're even funny? telling me. I well, know. Well, well, I, I, yeah, I don't know what the wink wink thing, you know, I'm not so good at that. And then I was like, and then I was like, you know, and Julie, I, I just feel like I made a colossal mistake. And then I kind of had, I brought her to the center and I, I proposed to her and I said, I am a millionaire celebrity. I live in a gigantic house in Los Angeles. I can give you anything you want. Mike is a school teacher. And I had a ring and I got down on one knee. I'm like, leave him, come back to me. And, you know, I dragged it on and there was, sure. there was more to it than that. And it, I just thought it was so funny. And again, the audience was like, I would say a quarter of the audience thought it was for real, that I was going to not a bad woo percentage. a local girl away from one of my best friends and marry her. But a quarter of the audience thought it was real. But, but she it's knew- It's a good bit. Give me, she, it's, it's a, a good bit. It's a great bit. It's I love one. the bit. I'm, I'm not trying to move pet. I have a weird thing. I need a right hand. What if I do this? I need the right. And we're going to get to that. So 25% thought it was real, which is, that means 75%. Is that a hand wiping, like wiping the butt thing like in India where you, or you, you wipe your bottom with here, so this is the dirty hand and then this is the clean hand or something like that? No, because okay. I, I make a point to wipe my butt with both hands. Yes. Um, I have a really heavy poop. I don't know if I want to keep that in. Uh, set, clip we'll that, let me know, in. but I have, yeah. I have heavy poop. It's greasy. Yeah, I don't know. I'm feeling it's embarrassed now. Clay. I have greasy, heavy poop. So we're that here I wipe with two hands. to talk about spirituality. Um, now you wipe with two hands, correct? I usually wipe. Yeah, I'll, I'll get both hands in there. Do you have a bidet, Mister Millionaire TV Star? I don't have a bidet. Yeah. Yeah. Could I hire you to research bidets and then? Uh, you don't need to get the best bidet. I you just that. need something to get it wet. Imagine you have a poop garden in your hose. Hand. Yeah. Imagine you have poop in your hand. Close your eyes. Now open them. Close them again. Okay, you could open. Now I take a piece of tissue and I go like this. Okay, great. But now there's still poop on my hand. You'd want to at least run it under some water. Why are we just okay with this Do you paper? have a bidet? Buddy, I've had a bidet for a while. <laughs> I've, I've had a bidet for a at while. At the end of bidet. At the end of bidet, you better clean yourself well. Yeah. Some of those Japanese toilets do scare me because they're, they're like little robots and there's so many buttons. It's, have you seen those? Yes. And they, they heat and there's hot air and they, great. they sing to you and they- I want, before I they forget, film I know your poop. not yeah. relevant, but I want to talk about one thing. No, but we haven't finished the bit about, we go back to the story in the theater, me proposing to Julie. That's what I want, that's what I want to talk okay, about. Okay, good. I want to talk more about that. Um, there's there's a there's a variable in it that I think is advantageous to to having why at three fourths of the people knew it was a joke, which is she knew it was a joke because she knew you never dated her. So unless she's the best actress in the world and came prepared, by her knowing it's not real, it makes people more comfortable. Would you say that's she played she played she it played really it real? well and Got Mike it. played it really well because I told him to. You told him I had advance. Mike be a little bit. I, I worked with him on his reactions, like be very flustered by this, but don't over ham it, you know? Right. What did you want them to, the audience to think? Did you want them to think it was real or fake? Fake. But, but I wanted to be on that line where it was like, maybe we're 10% of them were like, not sure. So it's, it's, it's on the yeah. dial. Having, uh, where, where I try and, and, and I don't, I'm not really in the best control of this, but what I try and do is, it's not about I want X to get it and then X not to. It's I want everybody to believe me at first and then throughout for them to figure out. I'm misquoting, and I've talked about this on my podcast before, but I connected so much to some, uh, a Stanley- you have a Kubrick, podcast? It's called Take Your Shoes Off. The, there's a Stanley Kubrick 
uh, interview where he talks about how he thinks it's so much better for people to figure out something on their own than for you to tell them. Mm. And not that it's a big secret, yeah. but when I when 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 people discover something and feel that they discover something, they become more invested in mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So finding beats of like letting like finding beats where some people kind of figure it out, oh, it's a joke. Mm -hmm. um, that's a luxury that film and television doesn't really have, which is why it's not as attractive to me as live performance. You can do that in film and television if you're if you're canny. You can you can have some mysteries that you don't tell right away and, and leave the audience kind of confused for three to five minutes and then they start to put the pieces together. In the narrative, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. But I never believed Robert Downey Jr. is actually Iron Man. Like there are reveals and discoveries, but to actually make people feel something that doesn't exist, is he really proposing to her? That, un, that discomfort that 25% that felt, in a movie you don't really, you know, even on a roller coaster, it's scary, but you're strapped in. Mm -hmm. Like there's something about live performance where you get to make them believe something that isn't so. That's a really good point. And it's such, it's the, it's the best. And that's where an hour suffers because that means you can't let them in on it too soon, which means now they don't understand. Maybe if they rewatched it. Yeah. But the what's the most attractive thing about live performance, and there's nothing like it, even though it pays a lot less and it's not as much esteem, is you get to go into a room and either create an energy or reject an energy mm. and make people believe that you're trying to, I don't know, I just, but then, the, then it gets into the place of what you were saying, at least with that first bit is maybe it's not funny. And I don't prioritize that. And I think that's to my detriment sometimes, mm -hmm. but I don't think f it, funny needs to be number one. I think I think entertaining, engaging, interesting, interesting is number one. Yeah, arresting. And then funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm with you on that. Can we do the right hand? I would love it. Um, just this morning. I am not making this up just this morning. I'm old school. I like to check Yahoo News, my Yahoo feed, which has fantasy football, entertainment news, environmental news. Crypto prices. Meh. I'm not kidding you. This morning, former Playboy model and the Girls Next Door alum Holly Madison was diagnosed with autism earlier this year. I'm not making fun of Holly Madison, but there is something that she said that is very, very funny, and I don't think she knew quite how funny it is. I had been suspicious of it a while. I'd had trouble socially, not recognizing social cues, et cetera. I just made excuses for it, blah, 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 blah. But I thought it was because I grew up in Alaska. Mm. But my question for you is, are you in fact autistic or did you grow up in Alaska? Could I go back to that in one second and tell you what, what's happening in my mind? Yeah. Sometimes people will do jokes, like what you're doing now, mm -hmm. a playful thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's easy to go along with a joke. Good things, how are you, for example. And then sometimes I have this instinct. I'm just, this isn't necessary. Please. I have this instinct to like, I don't want to play that joke. Okay. For whatever reason, I don't want to. But, I, but more so, I don't want to negate the person. So I tend to overcompensate the joke by making it even bigger or something shocking. Right. And something I'm trying to do in my life is to just let people make their joke without feeling the need to, to, to pump it up unless I want to. Yep. And I don't know what to do in those moments. So I could just, what do I say? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> women be shopping, you know, which they do all the time. <laughs> but I don't know, I don't, I don't know what to do with that joke. Right. I'm not from Alaska. Uh, I believe my autism diagnosis because it's helped me so much. But I also don't want to, like I said before, sell this uh, autism is something that I identify as. So like, I don't know what to do in those moments. I'll tell you what you should have done. Okay. You I'll ask you and do it. You sh okay. So I'm not making this up, by the way. This morning I checked, I'm old school. Okay, I go to Yahoo News, I check the feed, I, I read all the things. Crypto prices. Yeah, well, not. So just this morning, honestly, I'm not making this up. Holly Madison, um, she said that. Uh, Girls Next Door, Playboy Girls model, Next Door, Playboy Married model. to him, Hugh Hefner? Uh, married to Hugh Hefner said, um, and I'm not making this up. This just happened. Okay, you have to believe me. I always thought I had autism. I wasn't sure if it was that because I couldn't pick up on social cues or that I had big old floppy tits. 
But then I found out, oh, maybe it's not because I was born in Alaska. Huh. Maybe it's because of my big old fucking tits. So my question to you, Rain, is do you have autism or do you have big floppy tits? So you went the other That's way. The you only did other the option. thing. You That's did the, the only thing other where you had to go so far. That's what I'm saying. It was, but I wasn't, I was. But I want to tell you what the best response you could have made was like, holy shit. I grew up in Fairbanks. How, that is, that's like, good night, everybody. I think you that would have been the best. I think that was the best, yeah. Ask me again and only use this. Um, so my question for you is, do you in fact have autism or did you grow up in Alaska? Holy shit. I grew up in Cleveland, but I was born in Fairbanks. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. It's been such a pleasure. Rick, what a, um, we're going to cut all that stuff out anyway. The Soul Boom Podcast. Subscribe now on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else you get your stupid podcasts.